Please listen carefully. Hello, universe. Welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Summers McKay. And I'm Christy Jansen, and we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, and home office-worthy podcast. Today is Wednesday, the 1st of June, 2022. Well, Christy, it's officially summer. Well, no, technically. I mean, kind of officially summer. It is, however, the 1st of June. And uh, we did have, you know, the unofficial start of summer weekend. Yeah. You know, and it's good. I'm feeling very inspired by my garden right now. You know, a lot of things in our home are under construction, but I was looking up my gladiolus because I have all these beautiful gladiolus and they have all flopped, right? I mean, and it's just dozens of them that were planted by the previous owner and they're all falling over. And I was like, what have I done wrong with the soil? Or maybe it's because I'm not there enough, or maybe I'm not watering them enough. And I looked it up and the solution, Christy, was so simple. When gladiolus grow big and strong, you have to put stakes in them and shore them up and support them. <laughs> like when things grow really big and amazing, you have to support them. And so I feel like that is just my metaphor for my month. That's going to be my ju- is like what is big and beautiful and needs support in this world today, in this world this month. That's nice. I, on the other hand, have inadvertently been drowning my um, jasmine plant. <laughs> I just realized it's it's in a pot that doesn't have good drainage, I guess, and uh, it was covered by a bunch of leaves, and I thought it was really dry and needed water, so I kept watering it. In fact, it's in the middle of a cesspool right now. Underneath that layer of leaves is like smelly. So you've been unintentionally polluting your job. I have, and um, and now it you know the leaves have all started to turn like kind of orange, and I may have to just call it a day rip it out and start over with a fresh plant. But make sure if you rip it out, mulch it. Yes. Right? Exactly. Let it dry yeah. out, chop it up, roll it up, mulch it, like use it for something new. It's the cycle of life, right? It's the cycle of life. <laughs> the gladiolas need to be supported and the jasmine needs to come out. And- exactly. Speaking of wildlife and our gardening attempts, I'm going to go first because my story is about wildlife. Wildlife Conservation Society builds a massive database of Amazonian wildlife. How many times can I say wildlife? Uh, (laughs) The Wildlife Conservation Society scientists have been working on an enormous project, which is building an extensive database of the wide array of the wildlife in the sprawling Amazon basin. For this study, an international team of 147 scientists hailing from 122 research institutions and nature conservation organizations, has captured more than 120,000 images in eight countries. I would love to be on this team. The study is led by the German Center for Integrative Biodiversity Research and the Friedrich Schiller University, Jena, which is representing the largest photo database of Amazonian wildlife yet. You can click through and see it in the article. Between 2001 and 2020, the camera traps have taken over 57,000 snapshots of 289 species from 143 field sites. Species include jaguars and their babies, a giant anteater, short-eared dogs, tapers, white-lipped peccaries, harpy eagles, I could go on, many, many more. Don't forget the toucans and the pumas. This is the first time images from camera traps from different regions of the Amazon have actually been collected and standardized on such a large scale. By building this database, the WCS is able to keep track of Amazonian wildlife, but also documenting habitat loss, fragmentation, and the impact of climate change. The quote from Robert Wallace, director of WCS's Greater Madida Tem. Patata Landscape Program and co-authored this study is, WCS scientists were proud to collaborate with such a diverse group of scientists and organizations on this important study. 
that tens of thousands of images provided will serve as a critical data point to show where wildlife occurs and the staggering diversity of species found in the Amazonian region. I love this. It's like Nat Geo. It's like a whole Nat Geo research project on, you know, steroids. And mm-hmm. I'm so excited by it. And it speaks to my inner desire that I wish I could have been Jane Goodall <laughs> in a different life. And, you know, <laughs> wildlife photographers inspire me. Well, and and just being able to collect it all in one place. So this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I guess the lessons they learn will help target areas that need more preservation versus those areas which are less needing to be prioritized. Yeah. And what this also speaks to, Christy, which we love, is when organizations across countries, across borders, all come together for an effort. It's that global collaboration that we know is needed in order to move our world in the right Right, direction. because borders don't really exist as far as wildlife is concerned. Exactly. Yeah, like the wild tapir doesn't check its no, passport not on at its all. way from one country to the next. So <laughs> Exactly. So my article also has to do with nature and coming together globally and sort of how we know how well we're doing, which I think this database will help us know how well we're doing. Because my headline reads, Watchdogs Zero In on Greenwashing Financial Institutions. And this is something we've written about a little bit on the Optus Daily, the idea of greenwashing, which is when a company or a brand or a fund focuses on the ways that they're supporting environmentally and socially responsible behavior without actually doing it necessarily or without telling the full story. Because individuals and companies and funds, you know, even like, you know, sovereign wealth funds are more and more looking to invest with their conscience Mm -hmm. and put their money where their values are. So if you believe in climate change and you want to invest in a way that's going to support biodiversity and support a thriving biosphere, you're going to want to support eco-friendly enterprises that aren't all about sort of that extractive mentality. Many fund managers around the world have been noticing the rise in popularity of funds in line with ecological, social, and governance principles. And so they've taken that and they've embellished the funds focusing on their ESG principles and maybe overstating how, quotes green they are. Yeah. But more and more financial regulators around the world are fighting back and they're starting to hold fund managers accountable for greenwashing their services. For example, the British multinational bank HSBC was advertising its green accomplishments at length. The ads were saying how the bank financed net zero initiatives all over the world. They planted trees to offset carbon emissions. What it didn't do, though, was let people know and advertise all how it was financing companies with massive carbon footprints. So it was sort of this bait and switch, like, hey, look at all these great things we're doing. You just ignore over the over here what these uh, the companies that were also funding. But the UK's Advertising Standards Authority took notice and have drafted a warning to the Mm -hmm. banking giant. In Australia, the uh, Australian Securities Investments Commission is organizing its own regulations focusing on fund managers who overstate their green products. And they're going to be holding company boards accountable for environmental disclosures and accuracy of their green product promotion. Singapore is making sure that investment funds claims actually match action. The Securities and Exchange Commission, we've been talking about this, that there's mm-hmm. now going to be a requirement is in conversation. I don't know if it'll end up passing. Right. That companies are going to have to start disclosing their environmental impact and their strategies for addressing environmental impact. In the meantime, they have sued Brazilian mining company Vale for falsely representing itself before the collapse of the Brumadinho Dam in 2019 because the SEC says that Vale misled its investors and the public through making false ESG claims. The Federal Trade Commission fined Walmart and Kohl's for selling dozens of rayon textile products claiming that they were made from bamboo fibers, which they weren't. This is really interesting because this morning when I was buying my gladiolus steaks, Uh I was trying to figure out which one was the most green. Sustainable. Sustainable, (laughs) exactly. And because they had in the wall at Home Depot, right, they had sustainable steaks, metal centers, and then they had bamboo ones. And I was trying to figure out like which one, and I feel like Ariel, who produces this show, would be with me on this, is like, what's the greenest decision? And I ended up going with the bamboo 
But the idea that I probably have bought bamboo clothing from Kohl's for my daughter only to learn that it's not actually bamboo. That's just unconscionable. So I think this is going to be more and more something that regulators are paying attention to because of the popularity in eco-friendly products. And that's where the consumer base is headed. And we, we, we sort of vote with our dollars in, in the Western world. Where are we willing to spend our money? Brands are going to try to claim that they meet those, but unless they're being held accountable, because we have no idea how our clothes are made. So putting the light on them is going to help help us trust that wh- what we're buying is really what they're saying that we are buying. You have to back it up with with real evidence that you're making those changes. Now, speaking of real evidence, there's some studies that actually show eggs could make our hearts healthier. Why we should speak kindly to animals is another headline on The Optimist Daily. I don't know anyone who thinks we shouldn't speak kindly to animals probably isn't reading The Optimist Daily, but (laughs) marine biologists come up with an effective low-tech solution to bycatch. What's bycatch? (laughs) We'll have to read the article. And a plant-based oil gel helps the medicine go down. What else, Christy? Well, there's a rainbow 50 pence coin celebrating the 50th year of Pride UK. June is Pride Month. So I think we're going to start seeing more stories Mm -hmm. about the LGBTQ community and the strides that have been made in that area. The world's most endangered wolf has given birth at a Rhode Island zoo. AI exposes coral reefs singing. And finally, eight ways to manage social anxiety and feelings of shyness. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to today's Optimist Daily Update. That and much, much more, as always, is available on TheOptimistDaily.com, where you can go and search thousands and thousands of positive solution-based stories to share with friends and family and help lift their day. Everybody support us for free, share us on socials, forward a story to a friend, and The Optimist Daily is reader-supported, so become an emissary on OptimistDaily.com if you so choose. Thanks, everybody, for being here and being part of the solution-changing consciousness that addresses our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset. We appreciate you all and love that you are here, and we'll be back tomorrow with more solutions.